it's for us, by us, you know, kind of like FUBU. Yeah. <laughs> it's for us, by us, you know what I'm saying? For Tosins, by Tosins, you know what I'm saying? Told you he was giving you the okay, okay, back to make the way he don't uh, All right, so we got um, Tulsa, Oklahoma native, um, videographer, podcast host, artist, rapper, kind of do a little bit of everything. We got King Spencer sitting down with us. How you doing, bro? Feeling good. On the okay, you already know what's yes, going sir. on. Yes, sir. Appreciate you doing it. Oh, bro. Appreciate y'all having me, too. Sure. Um, so we were kind of talking just a second ago. You kind of just getting back into Tulsa in the last couple of months, right? Yeah, bro. I moved uh, to Dallas like two years ago, a little over two years ago, like right before COVID touched down and took over. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just recently moved back and uh, but I mean even though I moved I was always here yeah. So a lot of people rarely even noticed that I was gone. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was out of this mug. I mean, how, how's it been since you came back? Shoot, bro. I, I kind of I don't regret leaving but I um, To answer your question, bro. I'm happy that I'm back, bro. My family here. I ain't had nobody in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, COVID touched down. So, you know, that was like the center of the isolation age, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, being back home, you know, around the people that I love, you know what I'm saying? Can't beat that. Yeah, for sure. If you moved to a new spot and then couldn't get out and meet anybody, I'm sure that that was... Yeah, right. Yeah. It was... um, but you know, it was a blessing. I was still somehow I was still getting work. I don't even remember how, but yeah, bro, I ain't never stopped. But you know, I'm happier to be back here, though. You know, for sure. Um, so you you were born and raised in Tulsa. Yeah, I miss Tulsa. It's Tulsa again. You feel me? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Real talk. For sure. Um, so what were you like growing up? It was you know you always an artistic type of kid, or you playing sports, or what? What were you into? I wanted to play sports growing up, bro. I was so scared, though. I was scared to go to Armour one time. I was in middle school at Foster, bro. East side. I grew up on the east side of Tulsa. Uh, but um, had basketball tryouts, and I walked in the gym. Walked right up out of that, bro. <laughs> bro I was you got nervous. nervous. I don't know what it was, bro. I was always like that up until, like, my 11th grade. And I finally tried out, and it still didn't make the team. But I got on there, though. I got on there. Oh, man, for sure. So at what point did you um, get involved in? You started making music first, right? Yeah, 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 yep, yep. Oh, shoot. I've been making music just for fun like everybody else since I was like, shoot, bro. And some, somewhere in high school. Bro, I've been making music, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I, it was never... You know, not like what a person who make music make music. I was just like rapping and stuff for the fun, recording it, deleting it. But uh, in um, like my second year after college, I, uh, second year in college, I uh, I put out my first song and uh, video, and shoot from there, just not not as an artist out of it, but just as a creator. You know what I'm saying? It was just history after that. For sure. So you you shot that video for yourself. Yo, okay, video so, for myself. So how did you, um, so how did you, what gave you the confidence to jump out of the gate and shoot your first video for yourself instead of looking at something? Was there, was there people that you could have gone to? Shoot, bro, I was in no way, shape, or form a part of the Tulsa music scene. I didn't even know that it was like, I didn't even think about a Tulsa music scene. I, uh, I guess I kind of did, not really, no. I don't, I couldn't tell you who no, really tell you who no rappers were or nothing like that when I had shot my first video. Uh, and that's just because I didn't associate with that crowd. Like, I'm a school dude, you know what I'm saying? I, uh, and I spent a lot of my time, like, in the meadows. It's like uh, uh, some apartments on the east side. I spent most of my time out there and just like amongst my own little clique of friends, you know what I'm saying? So what was going on in the music, Tulsa music scene? I had no clue. So I wouldn't have known who could have shot a video, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just shot my own stuff and it wasn't even meant to be like a big deal. It was just 
bored experimenting, you know what I'm saying? And people just took a liking to the video? Yeah, uh, just people in my community, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, I stayed in the meadows, so it was a lot of young people out there that was like, you know, was inspired, I guess, by me shooting my own video and all of us make music. Like, come on now, in hip hop, like in the projects, everybody make music. Everybody yeah. can rap or sing or something, you know what I'm saying? So. When I did my first video, everybody looked at that and was like, oh, shoot, do, do my video. And then it just spread like wildfire after that, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, so you, you've done a lot of different types of like video work as far as like, I mean, you do interviews, you do, um, you've done ciphers and, you know, I kind of want to get into that stuff a little more in detail, but just, it, you feel like music videos is kind of where your focus is or? Shoot, sure, bro, keep it all the way G with you, bro. My only focus is whatever people need from me, you know what I'm saying? I don't really just go to sleep thinking like, um, necessarily how can I make my music videos better? I'll be really just focused on what I'm working on at the time. So if I'm working on a music video, I might not even be focusing on like editing. I might be thinking of like what kind of directing or what kind of locations or you know what i'm saying can i bring to this project and i might not even be it might be a, a interview or a podcast i'll be just working on so much different stuff bro that i don't really just focus all my energy on one thing you know what i'm saying for sure so you just feel like the demand for music videos is kind of the highest right now or that's just what what people come to you for the most that's that's see that's a tricky question bro because people would think that uh music videos is what i do the most of but truthfully speaking it is probably right arguably not even right now music videos like i do different kind of stuff and one big thing for me is like corporate uh like recap videos like that's actually been like the main thing that I do, but I don't share that stuff. So a lot of people be thinking that I only be like mostly doing music videos, but like I travel a lot and like 90% of my travel be for like corporate gigs, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it is a high demand for music videos, but you yeah. know, I, I've been selling a whole lot of music video opportunities just because I'll be out of town or I just ain't got back to people. So, you know, you kind of got like your core group of people that you really go to because you done weeded out a lot of the people who be kind of bullshitting a little bit. Yeah. Cause I mean, I don't like to call it bullshit, but a lot of people just not sure right now where when you meet people who are sure, it's just easier to just kind of focus on them because like, you know, people who are sure generally tend to go further. You know what I'm saying? So when you meet people who just kind of plan, just kind of dabbling with it, they don't take projects as serious. And, you know, they not as, you know, they just not, yeah. not as professional. They just not as sold on the potentials of what can come out of this. So when you finally meet people who like really think they going somewhere, not only do it inspire you, but it make you take their stuff way more serious. So yeah, bro, I, uh, I don't know where I just took that question, <laughs> but yeah. Nah, for sure, yeah. I feel you. The, the, the corporate business stuff is definitely, uh, I don't even know, I don't want to word it bad, but like the, the, it's, it's more consistent and the, the, <laughs> the money is easier, not easier, but it's, uh, it's not as, uh, it's more professional, I guess, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's probably more challenging than music videos, but it all depends on who you're working I just, with. I just mean as far as like the business aspect of it, like it's a, a, at least from what I've experienced, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, doing things that I've done, like yeah. rappers and artists aren't as, <laughs> artists yeah. together with I mean, everything. I done had some, ex some bad experiences with, you know, the corporate side yeah. of things too, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's hustlers in every, every, you know what I'm saying, uh, market or whatever you want to call it so yeah but overall i would say i'll be more satisfied with the business handling aspect of the corporate stuff than i do with um you know music new people you know it, it really be just new people you know yeah. what i'm saying the people who you've been working with whether it's corporate or hip-hop or whatever generally gonna always bring that bring that good energy but when you start working with new people bro it'd be like a whole, it can, it can get stressful, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. Um, so, it, like, kind of try to keep on the timeline as far as, um, like, you shoot that first music video for yourself and 
obviously people are hitting you up and do mine, whatever. At what point does it kind of, was there ever a point where you're like, okay, I'm doing music videos now, like a transition, you know what I mean? I feel like yeah. a lot of people have a moment where it kind of feels real, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I was working, I was working at the movies, and I was a tutor when I first picked up the camera. And then right before I made that full-time transition, I was working at the movies, and I was working at my college. In the, uh, just somewhere in there, I think the summertime came, and it was just like, you know, a break from college, my college job, and, uh, and being uh, working at the movies just kind of like shoot bro you know i'm about to start shooting videos so i just quit my job i made like i remember the first time i made 300 dollars in one day bro that was like right after i quit yeah. it was like i was charging like 150 for videos and i shot two videos in one day <laughs> made 300 bro i made that it would take me like a whole week to yeah. make 300 when i was working at the movie we got paid weekly 725 an hour take me a week to make yes. $300. I made that $300 in one day off them two $150 videos. I was geeking driving my Cadillac home. Like, oh shit. But yeah, bro. So that it was like somewhere around there that I was like, yeah, I'm about to just start shooting videos and it is what it is from here. For sure. Were you in school for like video production or anything like that? I took a class. I took a studio production class. I think that's what it was called. And it was about working in the newsroom, you know what I'm saying? And uh, three point lighting and you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, I did, but no, I didn't. Cause it wasn't necessarily for, this is completely different. Uh, from what I learned in school. What I learned in school introduced me to the editing, just, you know, simple cut and edit, cutting, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, uh, so to answer your question, yes, I did take a class. You know what I'm saying? That, that would be the truth, most truthful answer. Okay, do you feel like that's necessary for somebody that wants to get into? Hey, no, bro, because although I said, yes, I did take a class, really what I took the class for didn't, teach me nothing that I really could use. Mm -hmm. Not so much, like probably like 5% of what I learned in. It was 100% of an introduction, but it was like 5% of the useful, thing, yeah. useful techniques. You know what I'm saying? And 5% is probably too much, but nah, you don't need a class. You don't need a class for nothing. Experience is the best, well, I ain't gonna call it the best teacher, but it's a great teacher alone. I feel like I wasted a lot of time simply because I didn't take a class. I, everything, majority of everything I know is from trial and error and just getting out there and just like boxing it out. When in reality, you'll save yourself a lot of time and energy by just hiring a professional to teach you how to do it. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So yeah, that's, that's my For sure. look on that. YouTube is a is a great uh, outlet too, for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, real <laughs> um, talk. And then so kind of at what point um, does it transition to doing people in Tulsa's video or from doing people in Tulsa's videos into like people in other states contacting you and kind of like bigger name artists reaching out and st stuff like that. Oh, uh, so whenever I made up my mind that this is what I was going to be doing as far as shooting videos. Shoot, bro, I'm, I'm a real big Nipsey Hussle fan, so I was like listening to his music, and he just would say stuff that's like, you know, basically like trial, like marathon, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, and I know one day I was just like, man, I'm just about to hit up a whole bunch of people and just see what happened. Bro, I ended up hitting up like probably any, any booming artist at that time from like, from like a, from like a Lil B, y'all remember Lil mm -hmm. B? Yeah. From a Lil B all the way up to a fucking Jay-Z that had an Instagram. I was in their inbox and uh, one of the people that included was Jay Stone, which was one of Nipsey's people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just like, shoot bro, I'll come out there and shoot the video, you don't gotta pay me nothing. I said this same thing though, copy and paste a whole bunch of people ended up getting, uh, getting disabled from sending messages. But uh, Jay Stone was the first person that hit me back and uh, he was like, cool, he was real short and then I, I left my number in that, in that DM and bro called me one day and I was, I was stoked bro because I'm a huge Nip fan. Yeah. So I already knew about Jay Stone, Pac-Man, G.I. Joe, Cotty, like all of them bro. So when he said it's Jay Stone, 
Bro, I start tripping, bro. Like I feel like I feel like I got signed or something. Yeah. And this is me about to pay to go shoot somebody's video in a foreign place. Yeah. But that's how that's how it, the sickness got started, bro. I went out there, shot his video. Then everybody who saw his video start hitting me up. It was just like, and then from there it's just like, now I'll be going everywhere to shoot videos. So, yeah, I had his name written down because you have a bunch of videos with him and all that. So Jason? You, yeah, that was oh, just, yeah, that was just a random DM that yeah, worked bro, out for that's you. That's how I started, just a random DM, bro. That's dope. Oh, that's me. dope. Um, and then so from there, um, is that how you kind of, I know you, you shot multiple things with Nipsey. Is that how you kind of got plugged in with, did you? Did you meet everybody through him, kind of? Yeah, uh, so um, when, you know, just by association, just being around Jay Stone, I was able to, you know, be in the same room as Nip a lot of the time. And uh, me and I shot a music video for Nip, a music video that Nip was a feature on the mm -hmm. song. And uh, you did like, like some vlogs and stuff for him? Yeah, too, right? uh, I never did a vlog, but just. Uh, or like um, show recaps. Show recaps. Like yeah, bro. So I did probably like six or seven different yeah. show recaps. And like all of them was like all but like the first two. The first two was Oklahoma City, Tulsa and Oklahoma City. This is before he like I even got to shoot Jay Stone. You know what I'm saying? This is just him coming to, you know, our turf and me just being there as a fan with a camera. But after that, it was just like, you know, I feel like me and Nipsey Hussle never had a relationship. You know, I always like to be clear about that yeah. because I'm like, I really be like talking to Stone and them and I don't never want it to come back. I that I just be out here like, yeah, me and Nip was bros. <laughs> never, bro. Yeah. I'd be surprised if he knew my name. Yeah. I know one time I went to the studio while he was recording and he came up to me and was like, I appreciate everything you're doing for my brother. That shit dope. Shook my hand without me saying nothing. That's the closest I ever That's came dope. to feeling known by Nip. But that was enough for me. But yeah, no, nah, bro. But just just by association of Jay Stone, I was able to film a lot of stuff of just you know nipping the studio or on stage. For sure. Um, so that that music video that you talked about, um, it came out after he passed away, right? It did come out after he yeah, passed so away. Yeah. So I was just interested, to kind of get your thoughts on that. Especially, I didn't really even realize how big of a fan you were before. Yeah. And, um, but there there hasn't been a lot of stuff that's came out. Um, after after he died that's one of the few things i feel like i know they put out like the cattle thing and mm -hmm. there's been a handful of videos but not, yeah. not a ton so how do you feel kind of being involved in Shoot, one bro, of the last things that that video we actually weren't done with it you know what i'm saying the executive producer on it actually was like bro just go ahead and put it out you know what i'm saying song ain't mixed or nothing yeah. you know what i'm saying and i was like you sure it's like <laughs> yeah but it wasn't but the thing about that video dropping, it wasn't like a lot of people's videos dropping like the same week that a nigga die or something like that, like on some clout type shit. It was a little bit after, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, bro, it ain't a lot of, oh, it ain't a ton of stuff coming out by, you know, but it's that's kind of common whenever some people pass away that like a whole bunch of stuff don't start flooding. I think they start holding it to, you know, make the value of it go up and start taxing people whenever they want to get a Tupac verse For 20 sure. years after he passed away, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, so obviously, you know, over the years, like you branched out and stuff, but you've always kept an emphasis on like pushing Tulsa forward. And, you know, you have the Tulsa progression um, stuff going on. So just kind of talk about why that's important to you, because, you know, that's it kind of aligns with what we're trying to do as far as like, I'm just interested to kind of get your viewpoint on why you feel like pushing Tulsa is, is important. Well, um, see, bro, this is this goes back to that Nipsey Hussle stuff, bro. Cause like I said, I'm a huge fan of Nip, bro. And in one of his songs, he was like, uh, start your own movement. Basically, like, use my blueprint to start your own movement, bro. Like, me and my brother Rich was just in the car listening to this stuff all the time. And I don't know, one day he said that, and I was like, shoot, I'm gonna start my own stuff then. Bro gave me permission to use the blueprint, and everything I do is just like basically, excuse me, basically the bl blueprint of like what Nipsey Hussle did with Crenshaw or the Marathon Club in his in his community. You know what I'm saying? So we came out with the progression, 
And was just like, shoot, you know, that's going to be our Crenshaw yeah. in Tulsa. You know what I'm saying? It ain't necessarily that, but that's what my that's what inspired me to do it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's where and that's why it's important to me. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's for us, by us, you know, kind of like FUBU. Yeah. <laughs> it's for us, by us, you know what I'm saying? For Tulsans, by Tulsans, you know what I'm saying? For sure. So kind of, I mean, it's, it's almost self-explanatory with the name, but kind of if you can just... Um, kind of talk about the, the mission and kind of what the, the focus behind that is. So the progression, it represents just bettering yourself and your community. And uh, I, tr I just try to be, a, um, just be an example, the model of what I mean by progression. So uh, just trying to set up stuff for people to get involved in, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's stuff like the rap battles, uh, the podcast, basketball games, um, Whatever, bro. It's it's some it's a lot a lot of stuff we did before I ended up moving to Texas. But now that I'm back, you know, I like to get more stuff going. But you know, that's that's just what it represents. It's just bet progression for yourself and the people people around you. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, so talk about starting a podcast, and I'm also kind of curious about like. A lot of people that are behind the camera, there's almost a, a reason sometimes like they're not, um, especially videographers aren't aren't the most uh, like out there, like outgoing social type of people. But it seems like you, you're not really you don't really fit that mold, if that makes <laughs> sense, um, because you, you don't really have a problem. You know, you rap still and you you you're doing podcasts and stuff. So, I mean, I want I want you to talk about starting a podcast and, and what you're trying to do with that. But I also want just you to touch on kind of that what what sets you apart, I guess, from different videographers in that aspect. Okay. Uh, that well, was a lot. I'm sorry. That was a <laughs> I think I, I think I get it. I think I get it. Um, the podcast. The reason I started that is because um, just I feel like most straightforward way of saying it. I feel like I got a lot of stuff I be wanting to say, and that's why people got podcasts so that you can say it. You know what I'm saying? And not only that, but I just, I, bro, I'm for Tulsa, the progression, you know what I'm saying? Bettering yourself and your community. And, uh, you know, my, my podcast is directly targeted towards Tulsa and Tulsa artists, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to be a space where people can come and get their opinion and learn, you know what I'm saying? Talk, teach, and learn Tulsa music. So um, my goal is just to keep um, dropping, you know, sharing, knowledge you know what i'm saying and uh including people with credible uh, opinions on this stuff that so many tosins are pursuing you know with like you know with music you know what i'm saying so that's that's that you know what i'm saying and then uh i guess the reason why um i'm all right with being in front of the camera or what you what you just call outgoing or um Bro, that's really me just being the opposite of what, you know, I, I internally am. Internally, bro, uh, I'm really kind of like, like, what's the word, bro? Like, um, reserved a little more. Yeah, it's like, some kind of word that they be using. Introverted. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, that's, that's, that's the true me. Like, if I took the Miles, Br Miles Bridges personality test, I come out like an introvert, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I just don't like to let, allow, you know, whatever whatever technology or test or observations to have control over who I am. So that's why I uh, got this like, this thing that uh, allow me to be like more extroverted. Um, but that's just me trying to prove to myself, like, you know, I don't got to be introverted. So me getting in front of the camera like I am right now or rapping, bro, it's really not my element. You know what I'm saying? I really prefer to be behind the camera and learn more about others. But, you know, shoot, I can do whatever I want, bro. King Spencer, bro. Like, I'm the king of myself, bro. I get to pick what I get to do. You know, that's why, you know, you'll catch me doing extroverted things sometimes. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um kind of touch again just for a second on like the the progression that, I don't want to use the same word because I don't want to mm -hmm. be confused but like the emphasis on like pushing Tulsa forward because um, I feel like that's something that is kind of unique to Tulsa like there's a lot of emphasis kind of from every angle like I feel like everyone 
kind of has the same like foresight if that makes sense that like if every if anybody does good we're all doing better kind of um but that's kind of a unique thing even in the state like that's not going on everywhere mm -hmm. to the same extent so what do you feel like um is there anything you think you could attribute that to as far as like why tulsa uh, I'm really not sure I understand the question, bro. I, 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 feel, like, I feel like everybody in Tulsa is on the same, like y'all push Tulsa mm -hmm. before yourselves a lot of times. Got you. And that doesn't happen in okay. most I cities, you, you know saying. what I mean? So yeah. it, dude, why do you feel like that happens? Um, well, see, we, we kind of, all right, so one thing I like to look at about Tulsa is like we're a small city, a big town. And one thing about towns a lot of the time is like the amount of community within them compared to like a Los Angeles. Los Angeles is just a whole bunch of people that's for themselves. And one, I don't want to diss LA like that, but it's not me really dissing them. It's just like, but what I'm saying is, I feel like the reason that it's common for people to be for Tulsa before for themselves is because that's just the culture that we blessed with. You know what I'm saying? This city got a lot of trauma that done brought people together. And even though we can be divided a lot of the time, I feel like, you know, with you being from, you know, Lawton and you saying that about us, that's an outside perspective of what's going on with us. And I agree, bro. I do feel like Tulsa do be for Tulsa. Like we got strong culture here. And uh, yeah, I think that just that's just the culture. And I don't know where that came from other than the fact that we just small and we all related some way or another. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, so how do, how do you feel like the culture, what do, you, what do you feel about the culture right now as far as Tulsa and just kind of Oklahoma in general, like where the hip hop, everything is right now and I guess versus where it was when you got into the game? Okay, that's a, that's a good question, bro. Because um, Tulsa culture, when it comes to music, bro, it's very diverse. It's a lot going on in Tulsa. And every time I think I, I every time I think I got it all figured out, I figured out that, bro, I don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, who just walked past, he probably do music. He, I don't know, bro. It'd be like that. Like, I'll meet him next week at Soul Body Cyphers, and he'd be about to rap, and I'd be like, bro, you stand my, bro. bro like, and so basically, like, um, it's just so much diversity. But as far as when I first got started, I feel like it's changed a lot. Cause when I first got started, I don't feel like it was a whole lot of music videos getting pumped out. I don't feel like this. Somebody could correct me, but this is my opinion. My opinion is that it wasn't so many. And then I came in charging 50 bucks, everybody getting music videos now. And what that does is when everybody get music videos, more people are getting inspired to make music. You know what I'm saying? It's not so much the same now because the price has like increased and then it's kind of hard times right now with gas prices and all <laughs> kind of stuff going on. But overall, bro, I feel like um, the culture is, um, it, that, that's, that's a topic that's too big for just a couple sentences. But overall, I'm proud to be from Tulsa. You feel and, like, like it's in a healthy place right now? Cause that's what I say. It depends on what culture we talking about. Because like the gangster culture music, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I love I love my niggas from Tulsa, bro. But it, it's not it's not something that they they kid they gonna be proud of their kids listening to and becoming. You know what I'm saying? Because it's spirits in this music. You know what I'm saying? But you know I support it because I feel like a lot of it is just expression. You know what I'm saying? And you, I, I support expression, especially when it's coming from a real place. But overall, though, I feel like a lot of the music can be like damaging. It is damaging. I enjoy it, but that don't mean that it's not damaging. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's why I say it's a lot of different ways we could take this conversation. But overall, we we growing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then I, I I saw on your your podcast you do the segment like if you manage. Yeah. Such and such. So I don't want to ask you about anybody specifically, but um, you know, a lot of up and coming type of artists watch our channel and that's who a lot of our audience is to be for real. So if you just could give any general advice, like based on your experience and knowledge, just it doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but mm -hmm. what, what would you give some advice to somebody? To like an upcoming artist? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, general advice is be consistent, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
take care of your relationships. Don't don't be out here burning people, cause bro, especially in this culture, bro, a lot of people getting burnt every day. You know what I'm saying? Some people base their career on burning people. You know what I'm saying? Don't be one of those people. And uh, you know, shoot, just uh, just keep, just try to be different. I don't know. That that's that's just me throwing some stuff out there, though. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, and then I would kind of be tripping if I didn't ask you just about Gangs High a little bit, mm -hmm. um, since y'all work together so much. Obviously, he's we talked about it. He's he's on his way just to something different. Right. Right now. Um, so just if you can just you know touch on that a little bit and and where he is and kind of the progression you've seen from him, I guess, since y'all started working together. Shoot, man, I, it's a lot of stuff I can say about Gang Ty June, but what, I, what I'm going to say is that um, I ain't worked with June since he very first started making music. I've only been working with June for probably like two or three years now. But since the very first time that we worked together, uh, I remember I started offering this deal where if you pay me X amount more dollars, I edit the video with you. And he the only person, maybe one other person that I don't remember did it, but he the only person who always did it. You know what I'm saying? He always had a, a treatment for his videos. He always had props. And, you know what I'm saying? He always took stuff serious. Like, no, nah, bro, I don't think I want to use that shot. You know what I'm saying? We did a no plugins interview and he was like, no, nah, bro, I don't want to put that out. Basically what I'm saying is like, bro has been very strategic with his career and he he had he uh has qualities that's not very common for a lot of the artists that i work with a lot of qualities that i encourage people to have but this is stuff that bro already had you know what i'm saying so uh i'm not surprised that he had where he had i feel like he could have did it without without any of the people that he got i feel like let me slow down <laughs> me, I'm gonna say without me, I feel like he still could have did it as long as he had somebody who was willing to listen and execute on on bro's ideas. And I feel like you gotta have that, bro. I feel like you gotta have that if you want to be successful with anything. You gotta have a vision, and you gotta have people on your team that's willing to move and execute on what it is you're trying to do. So that's what I say about five one is that bro getting everything that he deserved because he unique. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um so is there is there anything, any projects or anything that we need to be on the lookout for? Anything you want to plug? Anything like that? Shoot, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just anybody who ain't never checked it out. After y'all done watching the the OK podcast, go check out the Tuss Progression podcast. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shoot, you know, tap in for whatever kind of videos you need. That's really it, bro. You know what I'm saying? For Just sure. trying to get better. No doubt. I I don't think I could have touched on everything, so hopefully I did a pretty good job of just yeah, getting, bro, a, that's dope. getting a, a pretty good view of you. Um, but hopefully in the future, you know, you know, we can sit down and, and do some different stuff. And, and Thank work you. Um, like I said, bro, I appreciate you taking the time out um, and we'll do it again soon. Salute, bro. What's going down, y'all? It's King Spencer, Mr. Progression on me, Progression on three, and I'm giving y'all the okay.